John Cena is going into a, uh, a world title. It seems like he's going into the uh, the world title picture here after next week. So I think uh, Miz should have uh, at least at least took the Raw match, if not the pay per view match. Then we have a, a Divas match: Mickey James, Beth Phoenix, Rosa Mendez, and Kelly Kelly. Rosa is just way 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 too green for me. Um, she's brutal to watch. Maurice, I swear they do it as a joke to put her on commentary. Um, I just, I, it's horrible. It's absolutely brutal to listen to. It's got to be some sort of rip backstage. That's my only thinking on it. They know that she sucks. Vince puts her out there and gets a laugh out of it. That's the only thing. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> well, they would she's not. She's a champion, so she has to. And this is not the first time that they put her up behind the mic. Um, right. I, I kind of like her personality. You know, she's like that blonde, stuck-up girl, and 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 just like her face is just that. Oh, I just want to slap you. <laughs> you know, right, and I she, think that's she, the karma she's that she's trying to really generate. She's definitely hot, you know, and she's got the she French accent. She's unbelievable. <laughs> oh man, she is. She is too. Then they did the things. I don't know if uh, I don't know if they still date, but she used to date the Miz um, at one point. But that was uh, that was a while ago. So I don't know if that's uh, if that's still continuing on. It may be. It may be because they did the. Uh, they always do those Zack Stage segments, and I swear that some of that stuff is a. It's a rib as well. Maybe I'll look into things too much, but I don't know. Whatever. But uh, they used to date. I know that for uh, for sure. And then um, what else did we have? Uh, the big show against Kofi Kingston. Um, this ended on a draw, double count out by, uh, by both guys. And then on our main event, we had Randy Orton versus Evan Bourne, who was up first, Jack Swagger, who was up second, and Mark Henry, who we'll talk about Mark Henry, um, who seems like he's in for a little bit of a push, huh? Although next week's Raw, they didn't do much. They put him in a match with, uh, <laughs> put him in a match with Cody Rhodes or something next week. You know, it, it's they, you know I saw I heard his music and and I knew it had to be someone big and I don't mean big as in big name but someone with that's going to dominate the match. Right. Um, and, a and Kane course, or a Kane or a Kali or I was actually I was actually saying to myself Kane. That's who I thought. We may have seen, but then, you know, looking at the pay-per-view, saying, oh, well, he just returned back. They're going to keep him on SmackDown. But regardless, it's a good choice. Mark Henry comes in and does what he, ha- he does. It gets, you know, gets the job done. Um, you know, does he turn face moving forward? And if he does turn face, and then who are you going to put him against? Uh, you know, he's a big boy, and, and if it's pushed correctly and if it's done correctly, I, I kind of like to see him maybe take a little step back and, and play kind of like a – that diesel role, maybe, you know, to, to be a bodyguard of maybe Evan Bourne, like them two got, you know, together. Because you remember back in the days, man, Mark Henry had some funny-ass skits when he was <laughs> with the nation, and then when, when oh, he yeah. broke oh, up yeah. with the nation, he had some funny, really funny skits with China and, and Mae yeah. Young. So Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mae Young. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's not go back to that angle, man. <laughs> Yeah, but Mark, I mean, we'll see what they do with Mark Henry, you know. I mean, next week they put him in a match with Cody Rhodes, and, uh, you know, he's over on a raw sexual chocolate, baby. Our dub in the chat room, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, sexual chocolate back in those days, man, no doubt. Um, so yeah, so that was Monday Night Raw from last night. We'll see what they do uh, with Mark Henry. You know, I don't I don't expect him to be in the, uh, in the main event picture for, for too long. You know, they did something last last night, and then uh, and then next week, they got him in a match with Cody Rhodes, I would believe. So we'll see what they do with him after that. Now, that was Monday Night Raw. Sorry we uh, sorry we rushed through that real quick, but uh, Jose's going to leave me in about eight minutes. And then I see California's on the uh, on the line. And everybody that used to be on the line, they uh, they hung up. Maybe we should start taking a few calls in hour number one. And then, uh, well, there's some call waiting. See, every freaking week, dude, I tell <laughs> these people. Is it your mother? Do it. Do not call. Don't call me to see. Do but not they always call do, me. though. They always do. Every freaking week, dude. No matter. It's it's always someone. It's a different person every single time. But whatever. I see Kelly on the line. And uh, like I said, man, maybe an hour number one because we had a lot of people lined up. And now I've got one caller. You know what I mean? We had about uh, six. I just got an email, too. It looks like game is still on. So that's what uh that's what I have. I mean, but you can always, I mean, worst case scenario, if you got a couple of calls after 8.30, you know, you can take some of those calls and, and, and finish I'm the saying. show. I, I, I had them. I had about six different callers. Now I got now I got one. So if you guys called and you hung up, 
Call back, 724-444-7444. Call ID number 30273, followed by the pound key. And uh, as soon as Jose leaves me here in about seven minutes, we uh, I'll take the very few calls that we have, and then uh, we'll wrap this shindig up, and we'll see you next week, 7 to 9 Eastern Time, Tuesday night almost, leading you guys into ECW. All right, Jose, the uh, WWE draft, they announced them last night on WWE.com immediately following Raw. We had um, headed to Monday Night Raw, Evan Bourne, Mark Henry, Jack Swagger, which we knew, and then Gail Kim and Alicia Fox. Give me um, give me your quick thoughts. Evan Bourne, well, I'll give you mine first. Evan Bourne, I think he gets lost in the mix, um, and I know you don't feel that way. You know, you, you think they see him differently, and my hope is that they do. You know what I mean? Uh, my hope is that he doesn't get lost in the shuffle, but he's on Raw. He's with the big boys now, if you will, and I, I feel like he gets well. Mark Henry, we just talked about him, what they do with him. Jack Swagger going to be in a program with MVP here um, in the next few weeks. Gail Kim, um, I like that. You know, I haven't seen much of her work over on SmackDown, and Alicia Fox I could care less about. It's funny because everything that you said, the biggest pick for me out of all of those, honestly, is Gail Kim. She is right. so underrated right now on the oh, SmackDown roster. She brings some really good credibility for the women's division. I mean, the lady, the female, the diva, debuted her first night and became champion. And at that time, it was a record. It was never done before that a female debuted for the first time on TV, of course, and won the title. So, you know, congratulations to her that she, you know, was lucky enough to be taken um, from SmackDown and put to Raw. But I completely agree with you with the rest of the guys. It's That's smart moves, and I'm actually glad that they ended up going to – to Raw than to, to SmackDown. How did the SmackDown are Matt Hardy, Finley, Tyson Kidd, Natalia, and David Hart Smith? My thoughts on this, Matt Hardy, um, you know, uh, with, with, with the rumors of Jeff possibly leaving WWE, you know, if they were to do something, I know Matt Hardy's a heel right now, Jeff Hardy's a face, da 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 but there's always that possibility that the two of those guys could get back together. I'm not saying now, but I'm saying at some point with the both of those guys over on SmackDown. I like that idea. Matt Hardy over on SmackDown. I didn't like him on Raw. I felt he got mixed up. I think uh, he would have been better fit for ECW, to be honest. Send another big name over to ECW. But uh, SmackDown works for me. Finley, um, you know, doesn't – doesn't he seemed kind of – he was in the mix for, for some time there on ECW, but I think that angle ran its course, and uh, it freshens things up for him over on SmackDown. The Hart Foundation, you know, I like them over on ECW, and I would have liked to have seen them stay on ECW, establish themselves a little bit more, but nonetheless, they're going over to SmackDown. They're getting seen by more people over there now, and uh, maybe there are plans for, for a bigger push for them, which which is good news, so I don't have a problem with that that as well, you know. I'm excited to see those guys uh, move on from ECW to Raw. I think right now, or sorry, SmackDown, I think right now the reality speaks for itself. Those three need a, a larger audience platform to get over what they're trying to come up with. And I think it's a great and awesome idea that they were traded to SmackDown. Um, and, and, and again, with... Uh, a bigger system. audience, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, at the end of the day, you're, you're, you know, you're gaining about another 800,000, 900,000 viewers um, exposing... Um, this new new uh, group of individuals, uh, Hart Foundation more than that. individuals. Yeah, and and that. the same worth... thing with Fit Finley. Fit Finley was just probably just another throw-in, um, allowing some of the younger talent within ECW to blossom a little bit more, take him away, put him back onto SmackDown, which, in my opinion, he shouldn't have left in the first place. Um, and then, of course, uh, who else did uh, the SmackDown land in? I know I'm missing, I'm missing something. Uh, well, no, you had, you had the Hart Foundation, Finley, and Matt Hardy. Yeah, and then with Matt Hardy, it's exactly, you know, he's uh, a little bit injured, so he's going to be sidelined for, for a couple of weeks at least uh, to, to clear up some nagging injuries. And, uh, you know, you can start putting him back with uh, Rey Mysterio. You can certainly put him back with, uh, you know, Jeff Hardy. Uh, you can certainly throw him into the mix. Uh, it's a good idea that they move Matt Hardy onto, onto SmackDown, which then allows, like, a Jack Swagger to kind of take over his spot. Otherwise, right, right. The, the the guys in the uh, in the chat room are talking about a uh, a possible UFC special next week um, because UFC 100 is uh, is coming up. I think it's this weekend, if not this week, 
weekend than, uh, than next weekend. But uh, talking about bringing back Boone for maybe a, a three-hour special where me and you will do the, uh, the first two hours for pro wrestling, and then uh, Boone likes to talk UFC. Boone doesn't like to, to talk much wrestling. He's not a, not a big fan of wrestling. So we could, uh, we could maybe bring him back for, for a, a third hour next week, and then we would lead you guys into ECW. But uh, Jose will be here from, from 7 to 9 Eastern time with me to talk pro wrestling. And then uh, Matty Boone, who loves his UFC, um, could come up here in, in hour number three. I will, uh, I will talk to him about that because UFC 100 is a, uh, is a major, major pay-per-view. So uh, sounds like a plan to me, and I don't 